Hey guys and welcome back to another Unregent 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be once again advancing up on my day and night system. In this one we're going to be making it so we have some street lamps and street lights inside of the game as you can see here and these are going to turn on and off automatically when it is day and night. So when it's night they'll turn on, when it's day they'll turn off. So I hit play and I can show you what this is going to look like. So again you can see in the top left we've got the time and these lights are going to nicely turn on when it is night time as you can see there and then when it's daytime again they're going to turn off so again i've got the day and night system sped up quite a bit in this video just for the purpose of the tutorial but it will work on whatever speed you have and as you saw again then they just turned off so this is what we can make today it's a nice little cool system which we're going to set up which again is another request so without further ado let me delete this code and i'll show you how i've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to create our light blueprint now if you already have one great you can skip ahead in the next part of the video which i've got the chapters in the bottom but I'm going to create my lamp, so I'm going to right click in my content browser, create a blueprint class and create an actor, naming this lamp BP, opening that up straight away. In here I'm going to add a component being a static mesh, not simulation, just a static mesh like so, and this is going to be our street lamp which we're using. Now I'll leave a link in the description down below to the static meshes which I have, and the one I'm going to be using is going to be street lamp 2 tall like so. That's the one which I want to use. And then we're also going to add another component, adding a spotlight. Now you can add any sort of light you want, but for me a spotlight is going to work the best for the specific design of lamp which I'm using. I'm going to make sure it's pointing down like so, and I can customize this to get it perfect for how I want. So change the radius, the color, the intensity, and all that. And for me by default, I'm going to set the intensity to zero because the game starts in the middle of the day, so I want the light turned off. So I'm setting the intensity to zero. Make sure the visibility is still visible, just the intensity is zero when it's turned off. What I'm also going to do is probably just change the color to maybe be a bit more yellowy rather than white, just because I feel like that might look a bit better. So light color, let's make it a nice kind of orange like that. Obviously customize that to get it perfect for you. Then we're going to compile and save and go over to the event graph, deleting these three nodes. What we need to do is create some events for turning on and off the light. So we're going to right click and add a custom event, naming this turn on. Right click, add a custom event, naming this turn off. I'm just going to put them underneath each other like so. Then out of turn on, I'm going to add a timeline like so. And this is so we can have it a nice, gradual, smooth turning on and off instead of it just suddenly appearing and suddenly turning off because it just looks a lot nicer and more realistic as well because it's kind of like the light is powering up or powering off. And I'm just going to name this one light intensity t for timeline like so so turn on goes into play and reverse goes into turn off like so because just to turn the lights off we're doing the opposite of turning them on and we're going to double click the light intensity timeline to open it up like so setting the length to how long you want this to take i want it to take two seconds to turn on and off completely but you can obviously set that to be whatever you like then we're going to add a flow track again naming this whatever you want so i'll just name it intensity Right click, add a key to curve float with a time of zero and a value also of zero, so this is when it's turned off. Right click, add another key with a time of two, or just your maximum length which you set, and a value of the intensity of the light you want when it is turned on. So the way I'm going to find that is by selecting my spotlight, changing the intensity all the way up to the max, and then copying that and setting it back to zero again. So you can input any value you want in there and you can go above this, but I think that is going to be a good value for me which I want. So again, 0, 0, and then your length and your intensity for turning on. Then we're going to press these two buttons here, right click on the first one, change the key interpolation to auto, and do the same for the last one as well, just to again have a nice smooth curve, just to make it look nicer. Then we'll compile, save, and close that timeline. That is going to be the timeline setup for turning on and off, but we do need to now also change the intensity according to this. So we're going to drag in the spotlight, and out of this get a set intensity, connecting that into update, and then the new intensity is going to be that intensity there, like so, which is your flow track which you have on the timeline. So this is now going to turn on and turn off the lights with a nice smooth transition between it as well. So we can compile, save, and we can actually close this blueprint as that is all we need to do in there. Now we want to open the code for your day-night cycle, which again I've made in previous videos. So for me, that's going to be blueprints and open level blueprint, as you can see here. And again, this is my code for my time cycle. Underneath this, I'm going to right click, add a custom event, naming this turn on slash off lights, 
like so. And that's just so I can have it all done in one custom event. With it selected, I'm going to add a new parameter, leaving it as a Boolean and naming this one turn on question mark so I know if I want to turn on or off the lights. Then out of this, I'm going to get a branch so we can actually see what that value is. Out of true, we're going to get all actors of class, with the actor class being the blueprint you just set up. So for me, that is lamp BP, like so. Then out actors of that is going to be a for each loop. So we're going to access every single lamp in the level so we can turn them all on or turn them all off. But in this case, it's true. So we're turning them all on at the same time. And out of the array element, we're going to call the custom event turn on, which we have just made, connecting that into the loop body. So again, if we are turning the lights on, we're going to access every single lamp BP we have and turn them all on at the same time. And if it's false, we can just select the get all actors class and for each loop, connect it into false and the array element now is turn off instead. So if we want to turn them off, we're going to get every single lamp and turn them all off at the same time. So I hope that there makes sense. It's some nice simple code for turning on or off every single lamp we have in the level. And let's compile and save that. Now we just need to actually call this custom event here. So we will then call these ones to turn on and off the lights again whenever we want. So I've got two different methods of doing this, which I'll go over both of them. So the first one is going to be in this time cycle code we have here, because this true value here is going into night and this one is going into day. So all we need to do is come out of this sequence, then two, which I already have, and we're going to turn on slash off the lights. And you can tick that to be turned on there. Or what we can do is connect then two into the same custom event there. So they're both going into it. So going today and going tonight, go into the same custom event. And then this Boolean value is going to be this and value here. Because if this Boolean value is true, we're going to be going into night. So we want to turn on the lights. If this is false, we're going into day. So we want to turn off the lights. So I hope that one makes sense for you. So again, this is essentially where you actually have set it to be night and day. The lights are going to turn on and off perfectly according to that value. I'm going to do it another way as well, just to show you that too. And I do personally prefer the second method, which I've come up with. And the second method, we're going to go into our track time function, which we have here. And this way we can get a little bit more specific with it. So we can actually decide the exact time of day and night when they turn on and off. Again, very easy for you to then customize and you can even maybe let the player customize the times as well if you wanted. So basically after we set the time here, we're going to hold down S, left click to get a sequence, with then zero going back into the is valid there just to finish off the code. And then one is going to go into the rest of the code we're about to set up. And that code is going to be hold down B, left click to get a branch, like so, going into then one. And the condition of this is going to be if we want to turn on the lights. And so what you need to do as well is come out of this make time span here, which is going to the set time, and then break the time span once again. And then we'll come out of hours of this, get an equal equal integer. And this is where you can then set up the time where you want to turn the lights on. So again, get the hours and the time of that hour when you want to turn the lights on, we'll go into that value. So I want it to be 10 p.m., 10 o'clock at night, which is obviously 22. So when the hours reach 22, we're going to turn the lights on. So to actually turn them on, the Boolean value goes into branch there and true is going to turn on slash off the lights and we're just going to tick turn on like so. Then we're going to hold down B left click again to get a branch connecting that into false and true is again going to turn on slash off the lights this time unticking it so it's going to turn them off. And the condition of this branch wants to again be an equal equal integer coming out of the hours but this is the time of day when we want to turn them back on so I'm going to say 8 in the morning, but you can do 7, 8, 6, 9, whatever you actually want to do. Just set these times up and again connect it into the branch. So once again, you can be a lot more specific with this. So you can set the exact time of day and night for when you want to turn the lights on and off, as you can see here. So I'm turning them on at 10 p.m. and off at 8 a.m. So I'm going to compile, save, and that's the code completely done for us. I'm going to close this and then just add in some lamp BPs into my level and we'll hit play to test it out. So let me just turn them around like so, add some more and then we'll have a look at this. So let's hit play to test this out. So you can see as when we get to 10 p.m. or 22, these lights should turn on with a nice smooth transition as we set up in the timeline again at the very start of the video. So it's 10 o'clock now and they're turning on with a nice color like that as well. 
and then when we get all the way back around to 8 a.m they should turn off with the same smooth transition they did to turn back on again so if we see 8 a.m they have now turned off again so this is working perfectly so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so we have a nice smooth transition for the lights turning on and off and again it's going to do it at the specific times of day we set so when it gets to night time as you're about to see in a second the lights are going to turn on with a nice transition like so and then when we get all the way back around to 8am for me so the morning they're going to turn back off again so we set up a nice dynamic automatic system for the lights turning on and off based on the time of day as you saw there so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one